Our next guests are world leaders in automotive electronics, and uh, we've had folks from this company on the show many times over our many years and always delighted to find out what else they're doing these days and how they continue to help us and drive us into tomorrow. First of all, Vice President of Product Management for the Connected Car with Directed Electronics is Jeff Weathersby. Jeff, welcome into tomorrow. Thank you, Dave. How are you? Doing well. Good. A busy show for you guys, too, and they didn't have far to go. I can almost see their uh, their banner from their exhibit uh, from our broadcast booth. And the Director of Product Management is John Durbin. Hey, John, how are you? Great. Great to see you, Dave. Good. Glad to have you with us as well. And uh, you guys always doing some neat things. And, of course, uh, not to be outdone, uh, you've got uh, the ability uh, to deal with our cars. And I've been using your product for some time, not only to locate my vehicle, but to start my vehicle, uh, to set geofences, like when I'm away, but someone's had to drive it back home after dropping us off at the airport, and I want to know it stays in my driveway because he has the keys now uh, you know things like that it's just peace of mind as well as incredible convenience so tell us in general about that industry and how it has grown dramatically well it really of the last number of years has just taken off is the electronics that you have available at your disposal from starting with remote start we had you know simple push button buttons to one way to two way to now lcds and then into smart start which allows you to access that remote start your door locks unlock make sure you locked the, the car when you went to the airport yeah <laughs> make sure you lock your keys in the car you can unlock it all of it from your cell phone and really is part of our effort here at Viper is to make sure we stay current with how do we have the best practices to allow you as a consumer to interact with that vehicle. And of course, over the years, my last, I think, seven cars have had remote start. And I just insist on that. First of all, because we're in Miami generally when we're not traveling the world and it gets warm and I like it to be cool. So I want the air conditioning on and I don't sure. want it on just a couple seconds ahead of time. So, you know, I always remote start the vehicle. And uh, and when you've had the remotes that work from a mile away, it's even better. If I'm in a shopping center or an office building or something, I'll start the car and head down. And years ago, people would say, oh my gosh, why do you do that? Are you afraid like a bomb or something? Yeah, that's it. That's why I'm remote <laughs> starting my car. No, how about because we're in Miami and it's 90 degrees and I want to get in a car that's not hot. And it works beautifully. And then when I've been able to do it with my smartphone in the last several years, since you guys have had that option, it just it's a logical progression. And as you say, it's, it's the ability to utilize technology to make us comfortable. And, of course, the reverse is true for those who are up north. And whether it's this time of year or otherwise, when they're getting some cold weather, they want to warm up the car. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Take advantage of technology. Let it work for you. Exactly. And one of the great advantages of the smartphone application, it allows you to really start bringing intelligence into that experience. So, for example, in an IFT-like way, you have the intelligence to start programming this to make intelligent decisions for you. If it's during a weekday and it's below, or in your case, above 85 degrees, yeah. start the car. And you can start automatically programming so you don't even have to worry about it. You know what time you get up. You know the temperatures that are important to you. Yeah. And start making some of those decisions so you don't have to worry about it. I like that, too, because there are advantages. Or, if, again, you ha and you can adjust the schedule, too. You know, exactly. if, you're, if you work 9 to 5 and that's it, you know you're going to be leaving to go to the car. Let it start at 10 of or quarter of and cool it down for you. And you don't have to think about, wait a minute, did I start the car? Or am I going to get into a baking car? You know? yeah. Or the, the reverse. Is it going to be freezing you know, and not start well? So, so that... That's been a big part of what we're doing this year as part of our Smart Start 4.0 announcement this year is really a full overhaul of the experience in the, of the application. And that allows it to have a much more intuitive experience, both working on the smartphone but also on wearables. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what else can you do that you have it already? Because I'm, I've been quite pleased with Viper Smart Start on my phone, but now wearables come into the picture. So, John, uh, I'm a guess. I'm, I'm a guessing you're going to tell us about that. We're, we're going to tell you, and we're going to show you uh, All right. a little uh, demo that we've cooked up. All right. And we can start here with sort of a. Uh, this is a, a, a snapshot of our our new dashboard, uh, which is part of 4.0. The intent being to bring the controls and the information that are most important to the end user and put them all 
in one place so they don't have to dig through the app or to click through uh, numerous times to get to the information that's mm -hmm. meaningful to them. Now, while well, I'm holding it for the camera so folks can see, if you're listening on the radio, don't have any worries, into tomorrow.com when you get a chance, and then you'll be able to check out the directed interview here from CES with Jeff and John. Go ahead and show us if there's anything you want to show us. Uh, I'll hold it steady and do do your thing if um, there's something you want to demonstrate. We're going to interact. Uh, we're going to use that to interact with the uh, the wearable, the Android Watch, and oh, okay. uh, I would recommend just for more information about the app and some of the different screens, this particular version is, is static, but oh, if okay. you go to viper.com and click through the banner uh, for 4.0, there's a, a, a very nice presentation of, of what 4.0 should look like for the different screens, the ability to personalize it by, uh, by climate or by time of day. Gotcha. Um, and, and again, trying to uh, show the end user just how many uh, rich features are in the app that they may not have used before. We're trying to put that up in the forefront so that they're more familiar with it, teach them how to use the app more intuitively. Gotcha. So those so are this all is just all a demo screen. I should have known that you probably didn't have a Mercedes M M uh, AMG GT. Mm, uh, not so much. Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do have in the booth, we have an iOS version that is more interactive. This oh, okay. particular one is was only developed to support our little um, uh, Start My Car at Google um, uh, demo that we're going to show you. Oh, okay. Very cool. So it has a limited functionality functionality, but we'll we'll use that to support what we're going to see on the watch. Oh, okay. And therefore, you're you're showing us now uh, an Android watch, a right. wearable. This happens to be an LG. Correct. And right. uh, we're going to show you three different ways that the customer might use the product in a, in a way to interact with their vehicle through their watch. Okay. First one's pretty straightforward, and I hope I can do this upside down. Uh, you would uh, wake up the app and go to the uh, start screen. And normally you'd get a dashboard here with a series of different commands that you could send to unlock your car, start your car, etc. In this case, we're sending a remote start signal, and it's ex executed automatically at that point. The handset is connected to the vehicle either by uh, cellular technology, as you're familiar with, or Bluetooth, which I believe you've also been yep. enjoying for the last year or so. Absolutely. If you're in, you know, in short range, then we're going to use Bluetooth because of the latency and it doesn't use up any uh, additional data on your phone. Yeah. Um, you can also use the uh, voice technology, and I'm going to have to bring it back my, my way for that, to do the same thing. Okay, Google, start my car. All righty, and Google's thinking on the wearable here, but Chris is able to zoom into the watch, and it says start my car, and now it says starting car. Right. Yeah, it has to go out to the Google server just like Siri does to okay. process the voice command and bring it back as a data packet to sure. the handset. So and I, but I'm not able to do that with my original version of my Galaxy Gear uh, at this point. Uh, but the, the Android Wear Android Wear will, will be, be supported. The um, there were a number of early uh, uh, innovators in that space. Samsung obviously uh, uh, was one of them, and, yeah. and Pebble. There are a number of those out there, but they're. Um, they, they could be supported, but they're proprietary solutions, so you effectively end up having to, to code for each one of them, which isn't well, practical from yeah. our, our standpoint. It becomes a nightmare for engineers, right? So mo <laughs> yes. Moving forward, we'll be supporting the, uh, the wearable Google Wear as well as the iOS smartphone or smart app watch yeah. when that comes out. And can you track your vehicle on the watch as well? Sure. And um, let me show you one more part of the demo. Really which quick, because we're, we're out of time. Not a real problem. Quick. So we're going to simulate here a start reminder. Oh, okay. So you have a pop-up that says, do you want to start your car? and you can swipe through and do that. But that could have been a GPS alert, and you would swipe through and you'd land on the map page, or an alarm okay. trigger, and you'd swipe through and land on the status so page. So if you set a geofence thing or something exactly. like that, it exactly. would alert right. on your watch, and then it'll tell you where it is. Correct. Uh, or if you have DTC codes, if you have a check engine light comes on, you'll start getting notifications that it's uh, not just smart start, but it's also lock, unlock. It's be able to see the DTC, the trouble code, the status of that information from the vehicle is brought forward to you. Very cool. Well, leave it to Directed to come up with these kind of goodies and, and allow us to do even more than we've already been able to do. You want to visit Viper, like the snake, viper.com for more info. And, of course, we'll link you there. Jeff and John, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Uh, we'll let you go all the way back to your booth about two aisles away. All right. Thank you for your time, <laughs> Dave. Thanks very it, much, It's Dave. our pleasure. Be sure and say hi to Jim Minerick and all the rest of the team uh, from all of Directed. And uh, we appreciate you guys continuing to be creative. Thank you. It's our pleasure. We're back with more from Into Tomorrow in Las Vegas. Dave Graveline on the Advanced Media Network.